If you've noticed, over the last few years, video on the internet, especially YouTube, looks so much better than it used to. And a lot of that reason is because people are shooting in 10-bit log. So it doesn't matter how nice of a camera you bought, if you're not shooting log, you're probably giving up a ton of image quality. So today we're gonna talk about the correct workflow in Final Cut Pro to get all that image quality out of your log footage, still have tons of flexibility to color grade it, and if you want, make it look cinematic in the end. We're gonna be using Apple Log, because ever since that was added to the iPhone 15 Pro, it massively improved what you can get out of a cell phone. It still blows me away and you can match it to other cameras. So this workflow works regardless of what your camera is, Canon, Sony, Fuji, Lumix, doesn't matter. This is the way to work with log footage in Final Cut Pro. As quickly as possible, I'm gonna explain log to anybody that hasn't worked with it before. It's not the codec, that's ProRes or H.265, HEVC, things like that. Log is a color profile and Basically, it looks like this. It looks completely flat, and this is just a way of preserving a lot more data and therefore flexibility in your image by removing the saturation and contrast. A very loose analogy, or I guess the effect of it is similar to shooting raw photos. It preserves all of that flexibility so that the image isn't baked in. But the problem is raw video is really huge. So log preserves that flexibility in a more compressed format. There's a lot more to it, but you don't need to know it to work with it. So let's dig into a timeline here. This is a bunch of footage from the Calgary Stampede. I've just kind of thrown it in the timeline. I haven't done much editing to it, but as you can see, it already looks normal. This basically looks like iPhone footage, you know, contrasty, nice. It's not what we're here for. We want it to look better than this. And the fact that it looks normal is actually just a trick of Final Cut Pro. If we reveal it in browser, right click again and reveal it in Finder, this is what it looks like. This is what you see when you record it on your phone. There's no saturation, no contrast. So what's happening in the background here is Final Cut is applying a LUT and it's doing a really good job. Like what blows me away is this footage matches an iPhone so well, even though it was shot in log, it just kind of strips away the over sharpening and stuff. So over here in the inspector, we're gonna scroll down, click on settings. This is where we're gonna find various metadata settings. A whole bunch of stuff is in here, specifically camera LUT, Apple log. You can see it just detected what the footage is. And if I turn it off, we go back to our flat, no contrast image. So I could do that one clip at a time. Instead, I'm gonna go over here to the browser and select everything in this whole project, go to camera LUT and turn it off. And now before we get too far, I've also got to point out that we're gonna be grading in standard dynamic range, not HDR. High dynamic range is the default on most phones. And that's actually what Apple log is capturing in but it's not supported by a lot of apps. It's a much more complicated workflow and it's just harder to grade it well. Like it's easy to kind of make mistakes. So we're gonna be working in SDR workflow, which is just still the most common used by most creators today. So what we wanna do is go over here to color space override. Right now it says that it's off, but it's actually defaulting to rec 2020, even though it's not telling us because it's not overriding anything. We want to override it to rec 709, that is the standard dynamic range color space. So when your timeline looks like this, all flat and boring, what I think a lot of people are tempted to do is select a clip. They're gonna go over here into their color correction tools, and they're probably gonna turn up the overall saturation of the image, start messing with the contrast, turn down those blacks, turn up the white point. Let's turn on some of our visualizations, see what's going on. This is going totally off the rails. <laughs> Okay, maybe like that, uh, you know, like we're sort of getting a normalish image, but never do this. Please don't do this. Uh, it is the most common mistake and you can never get reliable results. Log is created to be transformed in a scientific precise way. There are tools to get much closer. So you don't want to rely on your own eyeballs to try to get it there. You want a good LUT. Now I'm going to be using my LUT, but you got to take my word for it that I'm not making this video just to sell my lot. There's others out there. You can go find a good one. There's plenty. Google it if you want. I like mine. There's a link to it below if you want, but there are many different ways to find a good lot. Just find one that looks good to you because the built-in one from Apple is meant to look like a normal iPhone. So if you want the same results I'm going to have here, you can try out mine, but I'm not here to sell it to you. You can use whatever you like and it's going to be the same workflow. So let's clear away those messy changes and let's do it the right way. Now everything looks flat and boring, the whole timeline, but we're going to start with just one clip, work on that first, then we're going to expand it to the rest and start off by opening your effects browser, click on color. This is the next most important step. People get this wrong 
all the time, even if you know how to use a LUT. Okay, so we're gonna put a custom LUT on here. Just drag it over onto the clip that we're gonna be working on. A new feature in Final Cut is labeling your effects. So let's call this Apple Log Transform just to stay organized. And let's pretend we've never added a LUT before. So you're gonna click that drop down, say choose custom LUT. In your finder, you'll navigate to the LUTs you've downloaded, select them, and now here they are available in our dropdown. So I'm going to select Apple Log to Rec 709, and now we're getting somewhere. This looks like proper footage. If you want a bit of a comparison, here's a similar clip using the Apple Transform. So this is the default, what you get out of camera. Here it is with my LUT. It's a bit thicker, kind of punchier. But if that's all you could do with the log, you wouldn't be watching this tutorial. Here's where the magic happens. You need to make all of your changes before that log transform happens. So you're gonna select color wheels, drop them on here as well, and this is what's most important. The changes all need to happen before the transform. See that? So I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna turn the transform off. I'm gonna call this primaries, meaning we're gonna make the biggest changes like exposure and white balance. If you go into them, you really can't tell what I'm doing if you move them around like this, but it needs to be happening on this flat version of the image. Let's look at a demonstration. There's a lot of dynamic range going on in this clip. Specifically, if we look at the sky here, it's pretty much blown out. So let's pretend we just wanted to expose for the sky. We could bring those highlights back and you see we're actually recovering quite a lot of detail here. That's pretty good. And that's because the primaries, the adjustments are happening before the log transform. Now let's copy those adjustments, paste them into another clip right next to it. And now we'll just move those primaries afterwards. Look at the difference here. We really lose all of that detail in the sky. Like you can even see it in the waveform here. There are supposed to be lights in the sky over there and they're fully recovered if you're grading the log footage. But if you're grading after it's log, like you're just grading the Rec. 709, you can't recover nearly as much of a difference. Like check out trying to recover the blue. If I open up primaries after the transform and I crank up the saturation, that's what it looks like. Now let's go to the primaries before. Look at all that blue. There's so much data there. This is why you shoot log. Like this is how you recover the data. Don't even bother shooting log if you're gonna adjust it after you've transformed it. So let's do some quick color grading in the primaries. I'll usually control exposure in my midtones here. If I was to affect the white balance, usually I'm doing that in the midtones. I don't actually love using these temperature sliders because see how it hits the highlights and the shadows a bit too much. Most of color temperature really lives in the midtones here. This is all basic color grading stuff, so I'm not gonna go any further with it. But you might also want to add, uh, let's go into color again, uh, some hue saturation curves. Another way to do that is actually up here, if you're like in your editing area, you can also add correction. There's a bunch to choose from here. Again, hue saturation curves I use all the time. You can use whatever you want, but these come in handy a lot. And again, I'm gonna make sure that that is happening before the transform. So we've got one clip mostly ready to go, but we've got a whole timeline to edit here. How do we do that? I'll show you in one second, but first I wanna show you this crazy AI tool that really speeds up your editing. Like for real, I'm using it to edit this video. I've been using it in a lot of my recent YouTube videos. It's called Gling and it's kind of amazing. If you ever edit yourself talking, it's just the best way to do it. So I recorded a little demo here to show you. I've already dropped it in and you can see it's created a transcript of everything that I said. So we can watch it back. When people are color grading, when people, when people, I do this all the time. Like what I'm actually recording has so many mistakes, stops and starts, but Gling understands that. It knows how YouTubers talk and it can remove all of these dead ends and these words that don't go anywhere. So you can see at this beginning here, I started to say, okay, to show you, then I repeated myself and I said, to show you how Gling works, it's already cut that out. So if I turn on skip cuts and I hit play, I basically already have a fully edited YouTube video and I didn't do anything. It understands the context and it really gets things right a lot of the time. Now, the only step I need to do is I kind of proofread it and make sure that it's not screwing anything up. Like here, I changed my phrasing. I said, first, when people are color grading, then the next time I said, when people try to correct log footage, it didn't realize those were the same sentence. So I can just click this little cut and now I've removed that whole line. And I just kind of proofread the whole thing then I'm ready to go. If I want, I can also change the pace so it can remove more or less pauses as I go through. So like I could crank it up and it's gonna remove pauses between words. I don't want it to go that fast. I wanna keep it pretty natural. And when I'm done and I hit export, it's got a ton of different options. So this isn't just for Final Cut Pro, but that is what I'm gonna use today. And I'm gonna select multicam because there is a really great trick here. 
In the same library, I will import XML, open it up, and I've got a edited timeline all ready to go. But what's great is I can now open up that multicam, add some different angles. So now if I open up my multicam editor, I can just cut between different angles as it's playing. Gling has already edited the whole thing for me. So all I gotta do now is choose the angles. This is so insanely powerful. Check out Gling in the link in the description below. And thanks again to Gling for sponsoring this video. So back to getting the rest of our timeline graded. I'll select my one clip that looks good. Command C to copy, then Command A to select all of my timeline. I'm gonna use Command click to deselect that one clip since it's already graded. Then I press Command, Shift, and V. This is gonna paste whatever attributes you want across all of these clips. So take a look at it, make sure they make sense. You might've done some slow motion and stuff. I don't wanna paste that. I don't wanna paste volume. I'm looking to paste the color effects across everything, hit paste, and now my whole timeline has a basic color grade done to it. But let's say you made a mistake. I change my mind all the time. So for example, I had lowered the exposure on that one clip. That didn't need to be everywhere. So let's reset all of that. And now I need to adjust them all again. This is a super helpful shortcut I learned that I'm constantly putting to use. So I'm gonna Command C to copy again, select all, including the one that I'm on right now. And I'm gonna press Command Shift X. This brings up remove attributes. How helpful is that? So I'm just gonna remove all of those effects that I just applied. Everything is now back to log. Because I've still copied things it's sitting in my clipboard and I can press Command Shift V again and paste those attributes back in and now everything is color graded and I've got completely neutral primaries. No adjustments have been made. So now I could go like one clip at a time, decide that needs to be warmed up. So it needs to be darkened, let's say also warmed up a little. I don't even know if I'd do that. Let's look at a very different clip. Okay, this one's missing. Maybe some contrast and it's a little cool. So we'll bring down the shadows a little, bring back the saturation, warm it up a little. Whatever you need to do, now you can apply it on a clip by clip basis. Now let's say you wanna take the look a little bit further, make it look a bit more filmic. You can select a clip again. We're going to drag another custom LUT on top. And there's a lot of LUTs out there that can be applied over top of Rec. 709. So I have a bunch in my pack that'll really push the colors around. They're not like corrective. So this can happen afterwards. And they're usually a little too strong. So I'd dial them back to maybe like 50%. And then you've got something kind of interesting. So you'd want to do the step before you've applied it to everything. So now I would copy, select all, command shift X, command shift paste. And now everything would have that same filmic look applied on top. And actually there's another common way I do this. So I'm going to delete that custom LUT. You're going to have to add an adjustment layer. For some reason, these aren't built into Final Cut, but if you just Google them or look in the description, I'll provide a link. You can download them and you'll just drag it on top of everything. So if I zoom out, I can look at the whole timeline, make sure it's applied to everything put a custom LUT on top of that adjustment layer and look at that, the whole timeline now has that same filmic look applied to it. So that's how you work with Apple Log in Final Cut Pro. I really hope this was helpful to you guys. Let me know if you have any questions. All the links are in the description below. Thanks again to Gling for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.